All right, so it turns out I really like drinking wine and playing Go, so we're going to do more of it today. Uh, last session, we did it with some Riesling. We got to talk a little bit about that. I just opened this bottle of Tempranillo. It's actually a Crianza, which is basically a Tempranillo. We'll talk a little bit more about that. And I'm pouring it out of the bottle here using a little aerator. Uh, a lot of wines, in fact, most wines, benefit from a little bit of oxidation, getting a little bit of air mixed in. And you can do this very easily just by letting it sit out for a few minutes <laughs> or, or even you know stirring it in your glass. Uh, or, you know, you can buy a fancy doogad that is overpriced and kind of does it mildly as well. And, you know, it's totally your choice. Uh, all right, let's get a game and then we'll talk more wine while we're playing. So I think that's, I think that's a good, yeah, that's what I want to do. Let's see, we're going to start to play. All right, not black, I'm white. My opponent going to play. Are they going to run away? The answer is not play. Well, that means that gives me a time to... Oh, okay, we're going to play a game. Okay, good, good. Uh, I'm going to swirl my wine in my glass a little bit and give it a, a sniff. On the nose, a little bit of strawberry, a little bit of plum. Hmm, actually quite a bit of leather, too. So Tempranillo, and like a lot of red wines, is aged in oak barrels and... Uh, this particular kind is aged for at least a year, which can add a lot of interesting complexity. Uh, it can, especially for white wines, for me, it, may, it can make them uh, confusing to drink. <laughs> Often when I'm drinking white wine, I want something very, very forward, very, uh, you know, bouquet of flowers, fruit-centric, and a whole bunch of oak in that wine can, you know, give me some, an entirely different experience. But here, we're talking about Tempranillo. Um, this, so a little bit of story, this, this producer, Latitude 42, this is a pretty commercial producer. This is not like a super fine wine. You can go buy this in the market for anywhere between like 10 to $13 is probably a pretty reasonable um, price to pay. I think I should invade. Should I invade? Let's just invade. Uh, and this, this is the 2018. When we were dealing with wines, we have to deal with vintages as well. Uh, and as far as my pandemic drinks have been concerned, I think for the first half of the pandemic, the 2017 vintage of this wine was what I drank the most of. I think I, I think I went through a dozen bottles of this, guys. And and it was also to the point where, like, like the uh, the liquor store I was buying it from, it was a big box wine store, it's the chain Total Wine, which many of you probably know, uh, they actually, like, raised the price of it, like, I don't know, like, significantly, like, like by, like, $2 a bottle. Uh after, I don't know, I started drinking it for like a month or something. So apparently I wasn't alone in, in discovering this particular wine. Oh, he's going to respond there. All right, this looks like a fight. Are we ready to fight? I don't really want to fight yet. Uh, he has a stone there. I don't... Let's just... Um, maybe play here? I mean, I have to I have to continue, right? Letting him get a second move is too, is too good, I think. Yeah, let's continue. Um, so anyway, they raised the price of this wine, which made me very sad. I kind of stopped buying it. But it was also true that this, the 2017 vintage is supposedly much better than the 2018 vintage. And that's one of the things about wine. So much of the quality of what you're drinking is determined by the season, like the actual year that it was grown in. And uh, I haven't actually had the 2018 yet. So this is, this is a brand new bottle. I haven't tried it yet. So I'm, I am excited to try it and see if it lives up to as good as the 2017. Uh I'm not, I'm not holding my breath too much, but I did want to get, get a bottle and try it. So, anyway, uh, I want to play this one. Let's play this one. Actually, I really want to drink wine. I'm also coming from the gym, which is kind of why my hair is a little bit, like, I don't know, this is a little freeing. It's not because I'm, like, sitting on the coast of Spain, you know, Mediterranean breeze in my hair. Let's give this a try. Ooh, okay. All right. We are even just in the, even just letting it sit there for that long. We're getting quite a bit different uh, flavor profile already. Oh man, what are we doing here? 
He's attacking me. Let's see if we can get a little bit stronger. And if he if he responds like with this type of move, then we can pincer pretty aggressively. If he just and he's just gonna connect. What a dingus. Hmm. Do I care? Can I, do I give up these three stones? I think I give them up. How do I give them up such that I'm happy about giving them up though? <laughs> Which pincer do I take? I think I just take this one. If you put us through, we'll just give them up. Um, all right, let's talk about more tasty notes here. Yeah, I'm already getting a little bit, something a little bit more floral and a little more caramelish, like a little more almost uh, candied something, you know? <laughs> my, my wine descriptors are not where they should be. <laughs> this is what they pay people lots of money for. Uh... <laughs> All the sommeliers and masters of wine, all those people. We're just we're just going balls out here, <laughs> building this top. That's a big corner. Should I be scared? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's a twenty point corner. Twenty point corner. Oh man. Oh, and he's gonna continue on. This is crazy beans. Let's just poke at the shape. All right, we have to take a sip of this wine. We haven't actually drank any wine yet. Mm. Mm. Okay. Oh, finish is not as good as last year. At least maybe you have to let it sit out a little bit longer, but um, started really good. I actually really like the nose of this. Uh, very much like the the beginning and, and mid palate. Um, the... The after the the finish turns a little bit sour. It's not quite as smooth. Okay. Uh, all right. We have to think about go because this is like getting serious. <laughs> this is pretty serious already. This is Hane. I'm not sure why he's committing to these stones so early. It seems this seems too early. Okay. <laughs> Which one? Which one? Both are good. Take this one. He'll, he should block here. Okay, he's not going to. Um, we can just continue being aggressive here, I think. Can I be this aggressive? It certainly feels like I can. So let's do it. He, he, I think he really should just play this move at some point. This, this move threatens to make two eyes. Like, this is a good move. Okay. Uh, offering exchange. I can kill those, and he gets a Panuki over here. I think we should do it. I think, I think, I think it's good. Okay, he's not going to take the exchange, so game on. Uh, <laughs> just connect. Okay, I'm not sure he wants that. I mean, that's not even sente. I mean, really. Uh, I want to do... I want to do lots of things. <laughs> I should... So, so it is sent in the sense that I need to respond, but I don't need to connect. Uh, he does get... a little bit of momentum. Let's ask down here. He should just take this right away. Okay. Oh, man. Okay. Okay. Um, we'll play there. We'll give him one more shot. Shot. There's the... Uh, what he should do. Now he can come back over here and respond again. Yep. And we'll just play there because the stone is actually working real hard. Like, like he can't cut this. Byoyomi yeah. now starts because of that stone. Isn't that cool? Byoyomi, I mean Byoyo. I hate Byoyomi. Why am I always in Byoyomi? That's pretty big. I don't think we're ready to play it yet. Um, I think we just continue to harass. For sure, for sure. All right, Tempranillo. Mm. 
Oh, disappointed. Disappointed. Like, it's fine. Totally drinkable wine. <laughs> But it's definitely showing its price a little bit. I think I think it's pre- the previous uh, nine year was pricing eight, a little bit ahead of seven. It's vintage. And this one, uh, you know, this one tastes a lot more like a you know eleven twelve dollar bottle of wine, um, which is fine. <laughs> I drink a lot of eleven twelve dollar bottles of wine. <laughs> I drink a lot of wine that's cheaper than that too. So. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, so yes, Crianza uh, is the blend is the name of the blend in this case, where this is uh, I think yeah ninety percent Tempranillo and ten percent Garnacha, which is also known as Grenache. It's only called Garnacha in Spain. Uh, Tempranillo is actually also just really fascinating as a grape to me because it's it's a grape variety that is largely unknown by so much of the wine drinking public populace. Populace like if you're into wine, you know what Tempranillo is, but there's a lot of people who really like wine who aren't really into wine and who have never heard of Tempranillo. And Tempranillo is the fourth most planted grape in the entire world. Like, think about that. Like, this is, this is like, like you've, you've heard of, you know, Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot and Pinot Grigio and uh, Chenin Blanc. Maybe not Chenin Blanc. That's a little more rare. Uh, Sauvignon Blanc, right? Like, like, there's so many famous grapes that, you know, everybody knows. And Tempranillo is not one of them. And, well, why? Well, I mean, it's almost exclusively grown in Spain. Uh, there are a couple of places, actually, in Washington State, my home state, where uh, they do grow Tempranillo. A um, few places, at least. But it's not, it's not very much. They don't produce very many cases. So. Uh, okay. And we can do this. Oh dear. Oh dear. Uh, I just have to connect, right? Mm, this is a giant fight. I didn't really want to have a fight this big this right now. <laughs> I can just take, right? Or do I... I think I come out once? I might end up losing these three stones, but if, if I do, I, I'm, I'll surely capture those three. Um, yeah, we have to come out, because if he actually links up, that's that's a problem. That is a problem. Yeah, so that's, I guess, a good move. <laughs> so I'll take this co again. Again, this this whole black dragon. Yoyomi now, now starts. Good, now he's in Yoyomi. He can learn the power and the pain. So, another few other aspects about Tempranillo. It is actually quite a good blending grape. Uh, Merlot is often considered to be one of the best blending grapes, uh, but Tempranillo is just as good. It's also very medium-bodied, ruby red color. Um, also more on the acidic side, which is one which is one of my attractions. I really like wines that are much more acidic, and Tempranillo grapes tend to be that way. Of course, nine, uh, eight, is this a, seven, is this like a real move? Six. I don't think so. Right. <laughs> Okay, uh, I guess I should connect here. <laughs> I mean, I, um, yeah, I should connect there. Ah, it's too, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> definitely don't want to give up those three stones or risk giving up those three stones in an even huger go fight. Oh, this is a little dangerous. <laughs> This is very dangerous. Uh, I needed to have a plan to play any of this, by the way. Oh, I actually have a I have a co over here, um, which is pretty cool. But I don't I don't I I don't really want him to build a wall here again. This is a lot of points, even though well, even though it looks like I'm going to kill all this. So I guess it's fine. Nine. Uh, let's just take that. Yep. We'll say here. All right, you can have your wall. You've been building. Mm, that's mean. 
I just connect and give it to him, but then I kill all this? I think so. Simple. He needs to play here now. Needs to play. Mm. Mm, yeah, so relatively acidic. Not one of the not the most acidic wines. There's more acidic ones. I think like Barbera is probably a good example. Though Barbera isn't Barbera isn't tannic at all. And this is very tannic, that that feeling that leaves that dryness in your mouth. Oh I think I'm going to kill you now. This is a giant exchange, okay. Oh, you know what? This window is not set. I apologize, people. You guys can't see that. Woe is me. Woe is me. Well, that's terrible. So we can make an eye there that's kind of sente. I think I should just take this, right? I think that's better, Aji. And just don't let them get two eyes. That's all we have to do. Coming back here to take these six, uh, sorry, five stones is feel, really feeling much too small. So we can make a, make an eye there. Kind of in sente. And they can get nine. Eight, seven, so. six, five. Four. So let's just play there. All right, there's one. Mm, not co, cool, right? No, not co. Cool. Okay, where's your second? Where's your second eye? No, we just said that's not an eye. <laughs> we just told you that. This is not a real co. That's not a real eye. <laughs> not a real co, not a real eye. Mm. Annoying, but okay. Okay, this is his uh, last ditch effort. <laughs> That's reasonable. Like, you gotta try. Like, this is how you try. Um, is this one of those cases where this is better? Probably not. Let's just get all the liberties. What? All right. Solves one of my problems. <laughs> hmm. Very good. <laughs> Play there. Sure. This is big. Mm, can I play here? It's one of those moves that feels dangerous. Let's just play there. <laughs> now we're just attacking this. <laughs> No one cares about these five stones. Nobody cares. I still haven't played this. I wonder what the robot's going to say about that. <laughs> it feels bad. I can't feel too bad, though. I have wine. <laughs> That's the spirit. This is honey. Which cut are you going to make? Oh, we're going to make the dangerous one. Okay. I mean... You can do what you like. This much I know. Let's just play there. Ooh. Really? Okay. 
Okay. Okay, okay, okay. If I play here, it's not the craziest thing in the world, right? Let's just back off. <laughs> I don't see two eyes here, so it's just a liberty, liberty race. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten liberties. He does not have ten liberties here. Okay. I mean, you can. You can play that. Uh, actually, I can just block this way, right? Because he needs this and this. <laughs> Plays there. Nine, eight, he can kind of seven, threaten. six, yes, five. He can't get both. He can't get both. Keep it real simple. I guess this isn't necessarily simple. Okay. Oh, oh you are going to start this as a as a capturing race. Okay. <laughs> You don't. You don't. You think you can win this this go that many times? Okay, let's just gain more liberties. Oh man, I love wine and go. This is great. Why didn't I think of this earlier? I think, all right, let's do a little count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, so he's got to win this go like eight times. That's crazy. He's probably going to take away liberty. No, okay. All right, game on. Game on, sir. Uh hmm. -huh. I don't know. I think that's probably overplay. <laughs> Let's just block this off. Oh, we're going to get... Things are going to get worse before they get better, huh? Uh, this one? I think this one. I don't know. This is... this. I'm, more, I'm, I'm officially like in screw around time at this point. Because all of this is dead. The whole left. The, uh... <laughs> Black has three stones that are alive that are on the midpoint or left. Now four. Well, four stones now. Wow, good for you. You're growing real fast. All right, so he's looking to come back and cut. No problem. I'll just connect. This, this cut is getting going to be a real threat soon. Do, 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 do. Oh man, we gotta think about the 3-3 three, three point. <laughs> we have to think about the 3-3 three, three point. I don't know if I needed that actually. I could... yeah, it's, it's a good move. Okay, that's a good move. I should have, yeah, I should have probably played there. But let's link up this way. He'll take this corner point, I presume. But then I'll just defend the corner, maybe? Oh no, I don't know what he's doing. What? Why? <laughs> I I don't even know. Okay. Okay. You do you, dude. Oh, if I right click? Oh, it shows me the point name. That's cool. Hello, Fox, and all the features I didn't know about. Mmm, alright, nose is nose is really nice. I have no way of describing it. <laughs> and do not have the, the wine vernacular. Mm. I'm getting also a lot of tannin as well, which I also like. Uh, let's just play here. Let's just go, go the crazy style.
I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm strong enough just to not let him do anything. <laughs> so we will con continue to announce that fact. Oh, I feel bad for him. But the good news is we've almost finished drinking one glass of wine, so that means we almost get to have number two. Uh, just connect, yeah? Connect and play there? I think so. Maybe play, I'll play this first. I'll play that one first, yeah. Or, mm, let's play it first. <laughs> Okay, well, if you're going to do that, that makes my job very easy. Okay. Black has one eye. Yep, I haven't actually had a tannic wine in a while, which is very refreshing. Very nice. Uh, should I just take the co? No, right? I should play here. For sure. Uh, now, Black did get a... No, I guess this isn't territory at all. Like, he's got that territory and that territory. So he still has a 20-point corner. He's got another almost 20 points here. So that's nice. But um, this and this, is this move... Uh, is this threatening the corner? I don't think so. All right. All right, more wine. Here we go. Uh. Yep, now he's going to play there, so we get to play there. Let's just take all the little pokes. I think this is the biggest move on the board, which is insane how small this got. Uh, how quickly... Just to be a little bit careful here. But this is connect first, okay. That's okay. Mm. Alright, right, wine. We're drinking wine, people. Why aren't you? Now, supposedly. You can tell how alcoholic a wine is by its legs. Uh, meaning when you, you know, let the wine go up the side of the glass, how you get these little shoots there you probably can't see in the camera. How big and thick those legs are, are an indicator of alcohol. Content. Nine, eight, seven. Let's ignore another, another liberty over here. Let's just play that for now. You don't really need to play this yet, but I think this mix just guarantees that he needs to play some extra endgame. Uh, I guess we can play there. Let's just play this and take this off the board. Actually, I could make some of these other pokes too. Okay. How many co-threats does he need? It's a lot. <laughs> I didn't get that one. Oh, there's also this. This is big. That's two-point move. I missed two-point move here. Uh, fine. Okay. Yeah, this. I'm sorry this game was not interesting, but apparently 3-Dawn on Fox is not that interesting. <laughs> and that's how that works. This is interesting. That's a good move.
I actually have... Hmm, I don't need to take this off the board, because I can also play there as my threat. So that's cool. Oh no, but he will fill that in eventually. Alright. Uh, anything, anything, anything... Dun, dun, dun. I can make an eye there. Um, dun, dun, dun. All right, let's just play this. I, sh I, I still don't have to yet. I could, I should still take these last few points on the board, but I'm gonna, I'm just gonna assume I'm using them as co-threats. Oh, this is actually a threat for him, so I guess that doesn't work as well as I think it does. So he's gonna take. <laughs> I think. What? No, that's not how you take that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Very good. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is one of the nice, beautiful things about wine, right? When you let it sit out, let it get out of the bottle, especially bottleless. I know this is only a 2018. When I got the, you have one sign up with a little trophy. It's only a 2018. And so it's not like it's been sitting around for a long time. Um, you have wines that are a decade old. You know, they really need to, to get some oxygen in them before they taste even remotely close to their, uh, their potential. But even wine with this, only, you know, three years old, uh, getting, letting it sit out a little bit, getting some air in it will totally change the character. And usually for the better. Um, for almost any decent wine, especially one that's, you know, aged in oak, aged three years. Oh, I guess it's really only probably a year in oak. Yeah, Crianza's aged 12 months in oak barrels. And their, their note on the back displays subtle and elegant notes of black cherry with hints of spice and mineral overtones. And that's a thing that's that we have to be careful that word mineral because that means so many different things to so many different wine descriptors. And almost every person serious about wine really likes it, including me. Um, but it can mean very different things in terms of how that minerality is perceived. It can mean it tastes a little bit like wet stone or slate or chalk uh, or even like dirt sometimes. Um, sometimes it can even get sort of combined in with leather. Lots of different things um, can come out of minerality. And some minerality. Um, some people, even, even more uh, like everyday wine drinkers, might describe uh, tannin as that, that dryness you get from tannic structures, and particularly in red wine, as minerality. And so you have to be very careful. All right, uh, let's let's bounce this over and see what the AI thinks. All right, I think we're back. I got a bottle of, uh, or an image of the Rioja. Whoops, Crianza behind me. Although on that bottle, that bottle doesn't have the actual year, the vintage. That's at the bottom, which is pretty interesting. Um... Yeah, also, I, I'm starting to feel the wine. Like, this is definitely kicking in. It's doing what alcohol does. And I'm not sure if it's that, or again, it's that natural oxidation process, but I'm definitely liking it more and more. It's still a little bit of a cheap bottle of wine. There's still a little tiny bit of harshness to it. One of the things I do like about it, though, is that on the front end of the palate, I get a lot of strawberry. And by the back end of the palate, it turns into more like that black cherry flavor. Uh, which, which is always interesting because people say like, like Tempranillo has a lot of black fruit, like, uh, like blackberry and, uh, plum, currant, and I don't know, like almost all the Tempranillos I, I've been drinking, maybe it's just the vintages, again, have all been very much more red fruit, you know, much brighter, much more acidic kind of, kind of fruit flavors, uh, which I've enjoyed. So I'm not complaining, but I'm just pointing that out as a, as a thing <laughs> with wine. Anyway. A uh, few interesting parts about this game that are worth mentioning here. Let's get that wine bottle out of here. If I show you the graph, here, the enable AI review, you can see this is just a white domination victory. And even though it looks like white's only ahead over here by a little bit, it's actually like 10 to 15 points. It's just the scale is so, like, like by the end, it's like a 140 point win. So the scale is so distorted, right, when, when you have that... Uh, much of a win, just a tiny bit of lead that looks really small. When it's really like 10 to 15 points, like pretty early on in the game. So here, let's disable that for now. And not, I, there's not actually a whole lot I want to talk about. Um, really just a couple key points. Uh, like this one, indeed, the robot likes my move. This is normal. But here, the follow-up that the AI wants to play is this one. Isn't that fascinating? And so, yeah, jump out, jump out. Huh. 
Um, like actually don't cut, like save the cut. I think that's interesting. Um, so, and a lot of people know this move, but, but and including me, but I don't know all the follow-ups and when they're appropriate to play each one. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with you play this one apparently with a stone there, I'm assuming. So anyway, that's neat. Um, but for the most part, all these moves are fine. Here, the AI, instead of this, really just wanted to make shape, which is kind of weird, but <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Whoops, no, don't go all the way back there. Oh, man. All right, go back to the beginning. Forward, forward, okay. Uh, it didn't really like this move. And in response to this move, whoops, it really wanted to just make shape here. Um, and again, threaten to come down, and that makes sense. So if black does this, white can sort of surround the corner and have some thickness. Even though white's not really alive yet, white, you know, isn't, white is going to be fine. There's a, a weakish group to lean on here. And if white is strong, that means that white can invade here and then reactivate that stone. So this is all just fine. All right, back to the actual game. So yeah, not responding here, again, to make shape was actually a little bit of a loss for white. Tiny, tiny loss, but still. This is all correct according to the AI. The AI want like this point better than this one for attacking. It defends the cut a little bit better. It's not quite so severe. And again, because white is already undercutting the black two stones, I don't need to play a severe move like this. I can, I can play a soft move. But anyway, uh, the point I really want to show you is here. Uh, because when white plays this, this is a mistake. And black actually has a good counterattack. And I didn't see it in the game, but I want to show you the good counterattack. And maybe even before I show it to you, you can figure out, uh, or at least think for yourself, how does black actually effectively counterattack this. And it's pretty cool. Like, it's pretty cool. So I'm going to drink some wine. Mm. And we're getting to the end of the second glass here. Um, I may have drank a lot while I paused the camera. Uh, the counterattack starts here. Isn't that cool? And it's not it's not the most non-obvious point, but uh, when white connects here, and black takes this Atari, and this Atari, and just runs out like that. And you can see that white still has a cutting point here, and uh, these have all been sort of cut off from everybody. So, the the nice thing to know is that actually white is, I think according to the AI, white is still ahead, but it's it's very close to even. Um, white can manage here, but really is just managing. Whereas in the game, it's kind of more like slaughtering. <laughs> so, I think that's a pretty cool... Whoops, uh, sure, I guess I don't need that branch. No, no, I want to erase the lines, though. So, yeah, there's a total missed opportunity for black. After black doesn't play this, this is just painful for black. Um, white gets way ahead here. Um, white, or the robot didn't like this move either. Robot wanted to, oops, why can't I play a move? Just connect here. And if black takes, nobody cares. It's fine. <laughs> it's game on. <laughs> so that's fine. <laughs> uh, this co I didn't use effectively either. Um, basically I should, I, 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 you know, I have a co, I have a resource, but I'm sort of playing as if I don't. Like, I'm too quick to connect things and save things like here. I don't need to connect this. This is still a co. But it's so scary when, you know, it feels like this whole life of this group is on this line. Um, but in reality, it's really not because Black has this move. And that move's pretty good. <laughs> Black doesn't play it. Um, however, Black is going... Oh, there's also a really interesting exchange here. Um, when black takes this co here, I can I can totally contemplate just giving this up, letting black come in and me just destroying the whole bottom and right, and so basically letting black take life. Uh, but you know I already profited the corner. I already got some thickness here. I'll get more profit here. Like I'm only giving up three stones, effectively to get all three of those things, and that's great. Like that's still really really good for white. So that's another thing I can contemplate. I just, these robot exchanges are so hard to see sometimes, like, like so hard to commit to, because it just feels like, man, I want to attack this. But the robot's like, no, you don't have to attack it. You can go and kill, you can get, you can get more elsewhere. 
Like you've already gotten profit here, profit here, and you can make more profit there. It's my human stupid brain just is like, well, I can kill everything if black doesn't play there. <laughs> and the thing is, black should play there. All right, here, um, when black takes here, this is pretty big mistake because now black's dead. Now this is just totally screwed. Nothing for black to do, and the game's actually quite boring at this point as far as the AI is concerned because there is no chance for it. Um, it does suggest that black or white play this move to get out instead of my little pushing sequence. It's fine. Um, either way, it works. It's, it's, it doesn't change the, the game in the slightest. Um, oh, one of the cool things about this way right, is that white gets out with this move next. Connect. Um, and then black kind of has to take. And then this is connected, so white can jump out. And white's actually attacking this quasi panuki shape. So, anyway, that's what I thought would happen. And then white's fine in that case. All right, and yeah, that's it. Uh, everything else is kind of boring, <laughs> relatively. Like, like, black just died everywhere. There wasn't actually a whole lot of complexity to it. So here, let me finish this second glass of wine on camera. So, hmm. I can't identify this nose. Like what, what is that, what does that smell? It's like, it's somewhere between like new car and violets. <laughs> like, is there like a, like, like a new car violet smell? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's very nice. It's 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 like an it's like a haunting, enchanting kind of nose, um, which happens a lot with wine, right? You get these complex chemical compounds that you can't quite identify. Like you don't quite have a a memory for of another scent, and so they're a little bit haunting. And even though this is a again relatively inexpensive bottle of wine, <laughs> um, it's you know it's still capable of giving you this completely unique experience, and that's one of the amazing things about wine. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the game. I'm sorry it wasn't competitive at all. Uh, I am, I'm I'm going to continue this wine series. I've been enjoying it. Turns out, hey, you know, I, I'm at this point, I've, I've kind of stopped making videos for you guys so much as I am making videos that amuse me. And if I can have a couple glasses of wine and talk about wine while playing Go, oh man, good times are had by all. Maybe not you guys. Maybe you guys actually want, like, legitimate Go instruction. But, you know, that's where I believe Dwyron comes in. Like, go see Dwyron. Go, go subscribe to his channel. Uh, he, he does awesome, awesome educational Go videos. You might actually learn something about Go from him. So, anyway, that's it. Uh, peace out. Go forth, be merry, play more Go.